Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do camera alignment all inside of Blender. And in case you haven't seen the CG Matter tutorial, I'm just going to start fresh. Uh, what do I mean by camera alignment? Well, suppose that you have a photo that you took on, in this case, my phone. I just took a photo of a street, and this is the photo we want to use for camera alignment, meaning that I want to use Blender to put like something like a monkey in the scene, some 3D object. Um, you know, in this scene with the picture we took as the background. But uh, before we get to this step, we have to do what's called uh, camera alignment or maybe camera calibration, depending on what you want to call it, meaning that we need to make a digital camera that matches the position, orientation, focal length, and everything else of our real camera, meaning that in Blender, for this scene, I actually created a camera that is the same height above the ground facing the same direction, has has the same amount of zoom, same amount of focal length, and that's why the monkey actually looks like it's there. If any of those things are wrong, um, it will be on the street, but it just won't look correct. So this is a tutorial explaining how to do it, but in Blender, meaning that you're not going to be paying for software like Synthize, uh, which lets you do it pretty easily, but you have to pay, or an external program like FSpy. So all in Blender, and it's a pretty unique technique. I don't think I've seen it uh, before. But uh, before we get into it, there is just one trade-off you need to know about. So to be able to do it entirely in Blender, uh, the only sacrifice we're making is that instead of one photo, you're going to need to take two, right? Kind of like a stereo pair. So these are kind of slightly offset from each other. You see one's kind of to the left, one's kind of to the right, kind of like you're blinking your eyes and you see your thumb mo uh, moving. You just need to take two photos and the second photo is going to give us enough information to, uh, to do our camera alignment on the first photo. So as long as you have two photos, you are going to be good to go. So let's open up Blender. And before I show you the real technique, uh, something you might, you know, kind of be tempted to try is you kind of go into your camera. Maybe you set up your background image and you're thinking, oh, I can do this manually. I don't know why I need any kind of a fancy technique. Where's Compossible? There's Compossible. So you might uh, just put this in the background and think to yourself, okay, I can do this myself, like you try to reorient it. But uh, what you're going to notice is if you're trying to reorient it manually, like right now it kind of looks like the floor is level uh, with the ground, the way I've like oriented our scene. But uh, stuff like the focal length, the height above the ground, all this is incorrect because we didn't do it in a mathematical sense. We're just eyeballing it, which might be fine, but generally it's going to make your renders uh, just look a bit off. So here's how you do the method. Uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to start a new scene, make that full screen. This is what you see when you open up Blender. And hopefully I gave a good introduction of what we're doing here. You're going to go over to the movie clip editor. And this is where we're going to be doing some motion tracking. Again, this is why we need two photos. We're going to do a two camera track, but then only use the first frame for camera calibration or alignment. And before we do anything fancy, Let's just set our color management over to standard so that our images come in in the correct color space and they don't look weird. So standard. And let me also save the file because I know I know I'm going to get a crash. This is the luck that I've been having recently. So once you're in the movie clip editor, you are going to import in your two images as if they were an image sequence, which they are. It's just a two frame long image sequence. So click, shift click. You have both of them open clip, meaning that if you go right, left, right, left, you're going to frame two, frame one, frame two, frame one. You have a two frame uh, image sequence. And what we're going to do is hit set scene frames to go from frame one to two instead of uh, one to 250, right? We want to shorten our project and prefetch to load both of those into memory. Okay, so now we're going to be doing our motion tracking. And uh, because of the fact that it's only two frames, we don't need to really do like automated tracking. We can do it manually since we're only doing one picture, two pictures. We're not going 180 frames down or something like that. So I might actually use that approach instead of conventional tracking. So I think let, let's start off like that at least. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a tracker, which you can do by control clicking, hold control click. And we have our tracker and then you click right arrow to go one frame down and then we're just going to move it. You can click L to center, by the way. We're just going to move it to the same location. So left frame, right frame. You can see it's the same uh, thing. And by the way, you can use this window to um, this window right here to see if it's uh, kind of in the same spot. It's kind of a zoomed in magnified version. So that's a good tracker. Lock that in. Um, what we need to do is put at least eight of these trackers down to get our camera solve. 
and you can see like I did there, you can do it manually because you can just eyeball it uh, fairly accurately, or you can use normal tracking techniques, but uh, you might get some issues there if your left and right photo are very far apart. But let me try that method. So for this next one, let's do tracking. I'm going to use Affine. Um, for those of you who don't know what all this is, I did a four-hour series on it, so it's, it takes a while to explain. But um, affine basically means we're going to be looking for not just changes in location of our feature, but also kind of like pseudo perspective, kind of like shearing and stuff like that. Not as good as perspective, but affine is almost the same. So for this one, let's try to put a tracker here, which we can scale up to get this whole feature in here. Alt S to get our search box, make that very, very big, because again, uh, there's a big change between left and right. We'll see if that works. So uh, track, you go one frame forward, or or um, instead of hitting this button, alt, right arrow. Let's see if it does it. It's going to take a while to process because, you know, big images, but you can see it did that pretty well. So you can lock that tracker, and now we have two of them. Again, we need six more. So for some of these, I'll do uh, manual tracking. For some of them, I will do, you know, tracking, tracking. So I'm going to pick uh, features that are in different places of the image, both in 2D and 3D meaning that um, 2D, right, uh, this one's in the middle, this one's on the top, so that's just where it is on the rectangle of our image, and 3D meaning these are in the foreground, this one's in the background, right? You want to have variety in both of these cases. Okay, so let's try to get a bit more going on over here. I'm just picking areas of high contrast. And again, the reason you might be asking, you know, why are you not tracking, right? You're in the motion tracker. Why are you kind of doing this manually. Again, I find it almost just as fast to do it manually because it's only two frames because setting up our search box and everything uh, can take almost as much time, honestly. And I think this kind of highlights the process of uh, what, what it takes for camera alignment. It, it doesn't take much. Normally, you use, again, something like a Synthize or F-Spy, and those have you draw lines all over your, all over your image. So it's kind of like the same thing but almost with more freedom because instead of drawing lines, we're just putting dots. And, uh, you know, your scene won't necessarily always have lines in it, like lines that are parallel to the X axis or the Y axis, right? But you're always going to have just random dots and features, which is why I actually like this method quite a bit. So already we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's just get one more. I'm thinking one somewhere over here to get like medium somewhere in between foreground and background, middle ground. There's got to be a good name for that. Is that the same dot? I think so. So let's just center that. And hopefully me showing you the whole process is making it super clear uh, what you need to do. Okay, so here we have eight trackers, which is the bare minimum of what you need. Uh, we're going to try to do a solve. If it doesn't work, we're, we're going to need to put a ninth or tenth tracker, but we will see. So once you have all your trackers, go over to the solve panel. Normally, I advise people to kind of ignore keyframe A, keyframe B, and just kind of enable this. But um, in this case, we don't have to pick, you know, random numbers and do all this thinking, right? Keyframe A is going to be one. Keyframe B is going to be two. There are no frames outside of that. So even if you don't know what keyframe A and B are, just set it to one and two for now. And let's try to solve for our camera motion. And you see we already got a decent solve with a solve error of 0.55. Generally, you want under 1, under a pixel. So already we have something that's probably a correct or very approximate solution. But um, since we are using the camera tracker, it can actually refine. It can refine for focal length, meaning that we now have a method not only to get our location, rotation of the camera, right, uh, but also focal length, which is something you could not eyeball manually. So we are going to set this to focal length, and we're going to start off with 0.55. Let's refine, and we've already dropped our solve error to point, essentially 0.2, which is in normally, if this was a camera track that you have a whole shot, 0.2 is excellent. It's a very good track. And if I didn't do this manually and use the tracking to go from frame 1 to frame 2, I'm sure we could get this under 0.1, honestly. So if you have a small number here, anything under like 0.5, once you refine, uh, you probably have the correct solution. Okay, cool. So now that we have our camera solved, let's open up the 3D viewport. And we want to take this data and throw it in here so we can get our camera in the correct position. To do this, we are going to hit Setup Tracking Scene, which you can see if we go into our camera, 
Um, it looks like it already did all the work for us, but that is not necessarily true. We still need to align this to the floor, but you can see we have a camera with the correct aspect ratio. This thing is the background and everything's good. So now what we need to do is kind of like a somewhat furiating step in Blender because it takes longer than I wish it did. But we need to set uh, this plane, which is the, supposed to be the ground. We need it to be the ground for our camera track, which is kind of a hard thing to think about. But all you need to do is click uh, three different trackers on your ground plane. So when you set your eight trackers, I guess set three of them to be on the floor. Or if you're doing a wall, have three of them be on the wall, you know, whatever you want. And set that to floor. And you can see that already. It kind of looks like it's on the floor. It's kind of oriented weirdly. But when we did that, let me undo. When we selected these three, so again, click, shift, click, shift, click, floor, it gave us, um, it reoriented our scene. Really, it reoriented our camera so that it satisfies the condition that, you know, this is on the floor. Okay, cool. So hopefully, even if you don't know a lot about camera tracking, you are already following. And let's just do a bit more to help us out. We can pick one of these trackers, one of the three, and set this to be our origin which I guess it already was, so it's centered. If we pick something else, it'd go further into the background, further into the foreground, depending on what you pick. Um, and we could do a bit more in here, but the rest of this, I'm going to go with the manual approach. And by the way, lately I've had, there we go, lately I've had Blender crash whenever I uh, bring that window up, which I guess I should report as a bug. I don't know what's really up with that. Hopefully we can avoid it. Um, I'm, I'm not going to mess with it again. We'll just uh, go to modeling, go to our camera view, and it's essentially the same thing as if we had uh, compressed this window. doesn't matter. Okay, so at this point, we have it on the floor, and it's correct, but you kind of want, just, just because, you know, you're a human, you want everything oriented nicely into its, whatever, you want stuff parallel. Um, we need to move and rotate this to get things looking good, and we're not going to move the plane because then it's going to be off the origin, which is not convenient. Instead, instead we want to move the camera. So instead of moving the scene around the camera, camera around the scene. Okay, how do we do that? Well, you select your camera, and you can do that by selecting, you know, the rim there. And um, you kind of have to think backwards, so you could hit G, Y to grab, you know, move it along the Y axis. And if you move it to the right, it's actually going to shift everything left and vice versa. You got to think about it. It's kind of like looking in a mirror but we can just change the origin by moving along the X and Y axis. Absolutely not along the Z axis, because that's going to change uh, the elevation of it. We don't want that. We want it to be on the floor. So we can recenter. Uh, we can scale. And if you hit S, you're going to notice that nothing happens. That's because we want to scale to the 3D cursor, which means the world origin in this case. So you can see scaling moves it further, closer and further away from our um, you know, uh, center. So you can scale to do that, or in this case, you could actually uh, scale up the objects, depending if you want real-world scale or not. In this case, I'm just going to forget about that and scale it like this, but you can scale the objects instead. And then the nicest thing is we could rotate about, uh, it's going to be the z-axis, z-axis, to align our x and y axes with our scene. So you can see this line across the, um, what's the word for this, concrete, this kind of crack. Um, I'm going to make my x-axis parallel to that, so I'm just rotating along the z-axis until I feel like it's matching, because I want that to be my x-axis on the scene, and then we can just kind of recenter our origin, and you can see that it's still a bit off. Just fix that a bit, and the nice thing about this is you're not messing with synth eyes, you're not messing with f-spy, you can just, uh, there's nothing to import, right? You, you can just mess with things right in Blender, and everything integrates very nicely. But uh, one thing to notice, I suppose, forgot to go into full screen. Uh, one thing to notice, I suppose, is that technically uh, what we did here is a camera track, a very short one, just for two frames, meaning that <laughs> you, you, we can actually go to two different perspectives on this. So we've kind of done our camera alignment on two frames, so you can use either picture. But again, if you want alignment on one photo, you need to get that complementary stereo photo. Uh, to give you enough information to do your camera track. So you can use either photo, but if you really only want the first one and you don't want the camera to be moving and all that, you don't want the animation, what you're going to do is you're going to select your camera, uh, go to constraints and constrain to F-curve, which is basically going to take the animation of the camera and moving left to right, 
and uh, bake it into keyframes. And then all we have to do is click our keyframes on the first frame, invert with control I, delete. Meaning that the camera never moves, but the background still does. So if you want to fix that, uh, you go to background images, and then let's see, you could just load in the picture. So you can just go to image, open, and then choose shot one. For me, that's what it's called. And boom, there you go. Now you have a camera that stays still, uh, the background stays still, etc. And you could do all your integration of a monkey or whatever. Um, it already created a shadow catcher and everything for us when it did that uh, setup tracking scene. So you can see we have this very nicely. I mean, the lighting is really bad because we haven't like matched the lighting to our scene. And, you, you know, you could do that, right? So right now it's just kind of like this lamp above it, whereas really we have the sun on an overcast day. Uh, but you can see how uh, from here I got the monkey. You know, I just rotated it, lit it better so that we have nice shadows and everything. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed this camera alignment tutorial. I tried my best to explain it to the best of my ability. Not an ASMR this time by uh, popular demand of the Patreon, uh, but... Uh, speaking of Patreon, that, that's where I was segueing to. If you enjoy these tutorials and you want to support this channel, which I highly, highly appreciate, uh, because it wouldn't be possible for me to do tutorials full-time in any capacity if it wasn't for Patreon, if you want to donate and you have the means to do so, please, please head over to the Patreon. You're going to get benefits uh, beyond just your donation, right? You get stuff in exchange. Uh, sometimes I give tutorial files. Sometimes I give early access for different stuff. So sometimes it's uh, sneak previews. Sometimes I've actually uploaded exclusive videos that some of, the, some of them are memes. Some of them are good. Yeah, Depends what it is. I highly value anybody who, uh, first of all, is willing to do that. And second of all, has the means to. So Patreon exists. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this free tutorial. I was very excited when I thought up this idea. It's not like new information, but I think I'm the first one to kind of formalize it into a tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed recording it. And in some sense, that's all that matters. So who cares if you enjoyed it? Hope you did. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.